Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grab Students' Attention with Social Videos. My name is Michelle Pekansky Brock, and I'm faculty mentor with CVC and At One. And we're here today to kick off the first session in our Going the Distance with Video. This is a free webinar series that we're offering throughout spring 2023, and we welcome you to join us for more sessions. We have six more after the session lined up. And our host today is Carolyn Brown, who is digital arts faculty at Foothill College. And um, I've had the honor to be a colleague of Carolyn's for some time now, and I'm always really impressed with um, the ease that she brings video into her class, and she does some really creative stuff with it. Um, and Carolyn, before I turn it over to you, I'm going to take just like a, a minute to share a little story that I was thinking about this morning. I was thinking about the topic of today's session, social videos, and I was trying to remember like when that that concept started making sense to me. And I, it took me back to around 2005, I think it was, which was almost 20 years ago, which first of all blows my mind. But a student after I finished teaching a class came up to me and she said, hey, Michelle, did you hear about that new site called YouTube? And I was like, <laughs> what's it called? And she said, YouTube. I'm like, that's the weirdest name. What is it? And she said, well, it's basically a website that anyone can upload their videos to so other people can watch them. And I was just like, why would anyone want to do that? And I remember <laughs> driving home that day in my car thinking, that is the dumbest thing. That's <laughs> never going to work. And you know, it's just, it just kind of startled me to think back to that and see where we are now. And, you know, back then videos were these big files and now they're links that you can embed in different places. And they're so easy to not only make, but also share. And so, um, yeah, I just thought I'd kind of kick that off here and take us back um, to those, those old days. And um, you can show how, how far we've come since then. <laughs> okay. So take right. it away. All right. Thank you so much. So hi, I'm Carolyn and I'm at Foothill College. Um, as it said on the slide, I do digital arts and I also do this thing called design thinking, um, which is a very fancy word or term for problem solving or finding the best solutions um, and to improving user experiences. So I kind of want to approach this session as a user experience study. And we're going to basically start with you all. And there's over 235 of you right now. So it's going to be a little chaotic, but um, I, let me, I got to get rid of my fancy background so that I can use my little slides here. All right. So my first question is for you. Let's see if I can not make it blurry there. Um, why, not why are you here, but why do you want to use video? And what are your concerns and thoughts and or maybe why aren't you using video? And you can just drop stuff in the chat. So I can't see the Q&A, but I can see the chat. Um, and I can then get a better sense of what you as the user are expecting to get here. So we have things like make my life easier, engagement, human element, humanize, presence, visual learning, all these things. Okay, so then that's why you want to. So if you already are using video, that's great. And if you aren't using video, why not? I do see uh, one person said a, a, fear, a fear of workload. Fear, fear of workload, camera shy. Camera shy is very popular. Nobody wants to be on camera. <laughs> Here we are on Zoom, right? And nobody wants to be on camera. Uh, pressure to be perfect, captions, camera shy, camera shy, camera shy. Uh, canvas is not video friendly. Yeah, that's a good one too. Okay. Hate hearing your voice, equipment, captions. All right. So those can keep on coming and I will grab them every now and then. But I'm going to start just by talking about it. And then I'll move into showing you some things. Um, because I don't really want this to be about me. I don't want to be like, hey, here, this is what I do, because maybe what I do doesn't work for you. So I kind of want to frame it in your own experience. So, um, you know, the things that might be challenges or, you know, 
stuff that you have to overcome in order to get this, um, in order to get yourself into this space are the, you know, I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to hear my voice, that kind of stuff. So one thing I found that works really well for that is to just make it small, start really, really tiny. And I'm only going to share videos today that are one minute or less long. And you might be like, what the hell can I do in a minute? Um, but it's, it's amazing what you can do in a minute. Um, you can communicate so much more with a video because it's not just your words. So it's way more than something you write on a sentence or an email. It's way more than your voice, which you could record, you know, in a audio recording or voicemail or something like that. It's everything wrapped together. So you're connecting with students on many different levels with many different senses. So you have the words, the voice, and the way you look and whatever else you throw into the frame, like, you know, these kinds of things. So um, the other thing people get worried about is, oh, well, then I'll have to edit it and I'll have to like put the, you know, overlays and the titles and that kind of stuff in. But if you start small, you don't do any of that. You're just going to make little snippets that kind of place you into the student's space in a very simple, approachable way, I suppose. Um, let me go back to the chat and see what else we got going on here. Captions. So I'm not actually going to address captioning because that's different for different systems. Um, I use YouTube for everything. And I know a lot of you are in Canvas environments and you'll use Canvas Studio, which my colleagues are gonna come and talk to you about in the beginning of February. So that also provides captioning too. Um, with the kind of videos I'm making, they are more spontaneous. They're not instructional. So they're not part of the instructional content. So it's kind of debatable if they actually need to be captioned, um, but they're, they're easily captioned if need be because they're super short. Okay, so let's take a look at some places where I've used these. So actually, I don't wanna start with this one. I want to actually go share my screen, hold on, and get the right one up here. Bear with me for a minute. Okay, and that's not the right one. All right, we're gonna start with this one and so if I can go back to the beginning. Okay, so this is a video that's just dropped into an assignment. So it's the beginning of the assignment. The assignment is very short. It's just this line down here. Um, but the students have prepared stuff through other pages in their um, LMS, which in this case is Canvas. So let's just play this. Well, hello, friend. Great to see you again. I'm here to follow up and see how much brainstorming you did for your problem statement. How many ideas did you really brainstorm? And how many ideas should you be brainstorming in order to get the best affinity map for your design thinking? Do you think you need more ideas? Well, do some more brainstorming. When you have enough ideas, then you'll move forward to prototyping. My suggestion is everyone is more successful when they build simpler prototypes by hand. That means get some paper, some tape, maybe some cardboard, a marker, really basic stuff and build up your prototype. Then let your user try it and make sure you watch them use it. Don't tell them how to use it, just watch what they do. Take some notes because you'll need that. Okay. All right, so let me get back to here because I forgot something. Um, so I've actually segued already past the why into the, um, the when. So when do you do this? So in that case, I'm doing it um, as a kind of reminder into an assignment. So there's been a lot of instructional content, also which include video, reading, audio, and other things. But the social aspect is the little one minute thing that brings it all back around to what's happening from the student point of view on the assignment. Um, so I see some people already put in the chat some suggestions for ways to create the videos, apps, and so on and so forth. We'll get to those as well. Okay, so, so another when is you could do it as an intro. So let me go back to here. 
And I'm going to share a different one. So this one is with clips, which somebody mentioned in the chat. Let me move this guy down. Okay. Welcome to the graphic design class. I am so glad you chose this class. It's going to be really great. And I want to reassure you, this class is for beginners. There's no experience needed. So if you've never done any graphic design and you've never used any Adobe apps, you're in the right place. If maybe you have some experience and you're familiar with Adobe, I can help you switch up to graphic design too and take that instead. But if you decide to stay here, let me tell you a little about the class. We have 12 modules. In each module, you'll learn some design principles. You'll do some Adobe skill practicing, and you'll have many, many opportunities to create your own original designs. Kindly tap on the link at the bottom of this page and read the syllabus. That will familiarize you with the course policies and give you a lot of useful information about help you can get at Foothill College to make your time here all that much better. I really look forward to working with you in this class and thank you so much for choosing. Okay, all right, so, so that's a kind of like welcoming type thing um, where you can basically put yourself into the student space, but not in a very, not in a serious way, right? So that's um, using the app called Clips, which I will demo, demo in a little bit. But somebody mentioned that in the chat. Um, so there you're basically presenting yourself as an emoji or a memoji. Um, and it creates a different kind of connection to the students. So it's, it's lighter, I guess, than a straight up video. Um, and then the last one I want to show is this one here. Um, I'm going to screen share again. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so in this one, I'm doing another short one where I'm actually using the video to point out something. As you can see, I'm pointing <laughs> on the page. Um, so it's to kind of direct the attention of the students to something. Hi, I am so glad you chose this class. We're going to learn typography, which is letters. We're going to learn how to make letters. We're going to learn how to make things with letters. We're going to learn how to make beautiful letters and beautiful words and a lot of creative things. We'll start off with a little game, which you can get to by tapping the link right down there. And um, that'll get you something fun to do. We'll have a few videos to watch this week while we settle into the quarter. And next week on module two, the first thing is your supply list. So make sure you check out that. It's really simple. And a few more videos, probably module two, before we actually start creating stuff in module three. So you have lots of time to settle in, get your supplies, no stress, no rush. If you got anything that you need from me, reach out just by tapping reply down there. And I'll get right back to you immediately. Okay, so um, those are that's all I'm going to share from my own work, but you can kind of extrapolate from that and think of ways that this could be used to communicate with your students. I do one other kind of video that falls in the same genre of these basically less than one minute shorts, and that's direct messaging. Um, but I don't want to share those because they're personal to the students. Um, but Generally, I, I find those quite aren't quite as effective as the ones that are embedded in the class. Okay, so let's say you want to do some of this. So people are putting in, oh, somebody's using Premiere Pro for captioning. That's very cool. That's very advanced. Um, somebody wants to know advantages of YouTube shorts over YouTube. Okay, so actually YouTube decides for you. If it's a minute or less long, it's a short. And if it's longer than a minute, it's a YouTube. Um, shorts are always um, vertical portrait style. So that's, that's why you see on my page, the, the videos are tall, they're not wide. Um, and regular YouTubes are generally wide, but I think you can control if you want square and stuff like that. 
Um, Carolyn, there's a question in the Q&A that um, I think is timely right now, just since you showed those examples. Alicia is asking um, if you use the videos as introductions to your modules. Can you talk a little bit about like where you fit them into the module? Okay. Does it depend? So, okay, the ones I showed, I showed the, the Memoji and the last one I showed are in the very first module of the beginning of the class. So they're just intro things. The other one I showed is in the middle of a class, um, in the middle of a module even, where it's like a checkup um, assignment there. I also have ones that are at the beginning of modules, or I have ones that introduce a guest speaker type thing. So if I have a video that somebody else made, then I make a video myself <laughs> and introduce the speaker that way because um, we're not in the same video together. Basically, I, I can I guess I can quickly show one of those as well. That's a little different, but I'll I'll share one of those. It's not that difficult to do, and I got plenty of time because I've gotten way ahead of myself here. <laughs> All right, so let me go. Okay, so this isn't a vertical one. This is a this is old old school. <laughs> um, so this is my video, and then it introduces this assignment. But this assignment is this person's video, if that makes any sense. So I'll go back and play this one for you. So you can see this one's a, a minute and twenty three. That's why it's horizontal and regular YouTube. In this module, you're going to make a more realistic prototype of an app that's sort of similar to something you might see on your phone. You'll have a choice between a stories app or a weather app. And guest teacher Marissa will help you with those. I chose Marissa because she's a wonderful role model for underrepresented groups in technology and design. Marissa's awesome. And she's going to do a fantastic job introducing you to more things you can do in Adobe XD while you build your stories app or your weather app. Remember, choose one. You only get one grade. So spend your time making the one you like best. When you finish making the app with Marissa, you'll get a B for the assignment. Then you'll share your app and a classmate will try it out and they'll make suggestions for how you can improve the user experience by maybe adding some things to your app. After you review what your classmate said, you can add and change your app. And then you'll get an A for the assignment. So remember, if you do the basic app that Marissa shows you, you get a B. If you add more things after your classmate reviews it, that's how you get an A. Okay, so the, it's been like a long time ago. <laughs> I've gotten smoother since then. But anyway, so that is um, ones that introduce uh, modules or introduce assignments within modules. And, and in that case, it actually introduces a guest speaker as well. Um, they, there's so many different ways that you can do this and use it. Um, but I think the most important part is to just think about it as what kind of short thing am I communicating here? Like what, what is, what is it that I want to say? And I actually added the, the Marissa one later. I used to just have Marissa do the thing. And I got feedback from students saying that this is kind of weird, but not weird. It's kind of sad that they didn't like Marissa doing the thing because I was the teacher and I should be doing the thing. And I felt like Marissa is a younger person from an underrepresented group she's just freaking awesome and I'm like this old white lady and <laughs> my students are just asking me to like do this thing and I was like what's wh why I mean why why does it always have to be me and there was like well you know they were basically paying me to teach the class or whatever like that but I said you know if you were in a face-to-face -face class and you brought in a guest speaker people would be like jumping up and down and cheering so it was those extra videos were kind of to, to bring that back around to, hey, look, I'm, you know, collaborating with people here, bringing other people in to do, to, to bring more viewpoints and more experiences into the class. 
Uh, so let's see, let me check the chat over here and see what's going on. Oh, so yeah, somebody's asking about the vertical versus the horizontal. Yeah, so in YouTube or in the other things I'll show you in a second, um, vertical is for short videos. So things that are one minute or less automatically go to vertical and things that are longer if you go to YouTube are going to be horizontal unless you specifically make them otherwise. Let me look through this. Oh, is there research indicating students prefer vertical videos? Great question. All right, yes, students do prefer vertical videos because they're looking at them on their phone. Right? <laughs> That's the quick answer to that. And if you look at a regular instructional video, like the last one I showed or the one Marissa did, and it's horizontal, you have to turn the phone and I get, yeah, okay, fine. That takes you like a millisecond to do. People don't like turning their phones. They like watching stuff vertical. Um, I've actually looked into making longer form videos in the vertical, um, but it's a little harder to record. So I won't get into that. Um, what else is going on here? Okay, all right, good. So the chat's coming along. All right, so I'm going to now screen share and give you a little bit of a demo on how to do some of these things. And like I said, the videos are super short. So you're making like a minute or less and making them shouldn't take you very long. So that's why I think this is a great way to get into this is you don't need a lot of equipment. All you need is a phone. Um, you don't need lights. You don't need anything fancy, a mic, microphone or anything like that. Um, I use a window that looks out into a bright sunshine, <laughs> sunshine normally. Um, we have a lot of rain. It's a little bit problematic, but um, you can pull down the shade on your window and then take a regular light and shine it at the shade. So the light's bouncing off of it and you'll get a similar effect. I can do that right now. It makes me a little bit pink, um, but actually I'll do that on Zoom just so you see. So I'm gonna step away for a second, be right back. Okay, so this is what it looks like if I don't have sunshine. So it's not quite as good. So I'm gonna go back and raise the shade and we'll move forward with sunshine. Okay, so anyway, so nothing with lights. You don't need anything fancy. Just put your phone, your laptop and yourself in front of a window and you'll be good to go. And then I'm going to share my phone now. Oh, so I have a good question. Can you still hear me when I do this? Yes, I can. We can. Right. I thought we tested that. Okay. All right. Fine. So this is my phone. <laughs> and um, to keep things really simple, we're just going to look at two apps. Well, we can use the camera app. So three apps, right? So if you just really want to whip one out quick, you can go over to your camera app, you know, put it in selfie mode and then, you know, just hit record and, and do whatever you want. And, you know, you're just going to look like what you look like in the environment you're in. And I don't particularly care for that because I'm with the group of people who are like, eh, I don't look good on camera. I don't like the way I sound. You know, sound. I've gotten past the way I sound, but you know, I, I don't like this. Um, I also don't like having to get ready. So I don't like, you know, there to be extra challenges and burdens associated with this. I want something really quick and easy. So yeah, I could, you know, set up a better backdrop. I could you know, get my hair done. I could, you know, do a color job. I could put on some makeup and so on and so forth, but that takes time. And I don't want to deal with time. So I use Snapchat. Okay. And this is Snapchat and Snapchat has lovely filters. So let's go to there. So this is the filter I use. Oops. Where'd I go? Come back. Oh no. Hold on. I got to get myself back here. There we go. Okay. So now I've stopped. Oh, okay. This is getting confusing because it's okay. <laughs> my laptop and my phone both recording me. All right. So this is what Snapchat does with this filter. Right? And that's the first one you saw. And if I don't like green hair, this is really hard to actually do and make it look right on Zoom. I can change it to red. 
and I can change it to pink and I can change it to black and I can change it to gold and so on and so forth. And it's literally that fast, right? So all I did was just tap the screen and it changes me up. If I don't like that, I can go for something else. Let's see, let's get a good one here. Okay, right, that's very simple, basic. Um, that's more hair. Snapchat changes the order of the filters. So a lot of times you just explore. Um, so you get something you like. Right. So you can get one that you know gives you a little more color in your cheeks and darker lips and stuff like that. And you can get ones that no, we don't want to use that totally distort you. You can play around a lot. Um try and find one that. You know, this one is similar to what you'll see in clips where it throws on a, a basically a 3D head on you. And I want to find one that is not female. I'm not having a good time with that today. Strange ones. Come on. Where, where are the guys? I'm sure not the only one laughing, right? <laughs> I, I, okay, cool, I got one. Where'd he go? No, uh, it was this one. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> you can be whoever you want. And it's literally at the tap of your finger, right? And um, there are ways you can kind of, you can make your own too, but let's not get into that. Um, you can sort of save them, you know, so that you can get back to them later on, remember what they're called. Um, but the whole Snapchat thing is it likes to shuffle and give you new ones all the time. So if you are recording and you need more than one video that needs to look similar, so like in a series, I would say just do them all once. That way you've got the filter and you just kind of knock it off. So the green hair thing, I used that one with each of the different hair colors and populated the entire course with a bunch of little clips using that. Carolyn, um, are you going to yeah. show us how to get from, from it yes. in Snapchat yeah. into Canvas? Yeah, 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 yeah. we're getting lots of questions <laughs> about that. And I just want to let okay. folks know it's so, coming. <laughs> no, the first thing I want to do is, okay, so now you know what you look like. So I got to uh, get my stupid Zoom out the way here. Okay, back to here. All right, so how do you actually make the video? Okay, so the, the filters are the circles at the bottom of the screen. And you just tap and hold on the one in the middle, right? So if I'm going to tap and hold, there'll be this yellow line that goes around and that's recording. So it's making my video and it'll go around more than once, but it only go up to a minute and then it stops. So you can stop whenever, just let go. And well, then there's a yellow line that goes around and that's recording. Dude, this so is it's so making awkward. my video and it'll okay. go around more than once, but it, it only plays it back to a minute and then it stops. So you can stop whenever there'll be this yellow line that goes around okay, and that's recording going. all right so it's uh, making my right. video i gotta talk I over go me the points, but it only go i'll up drop that down okay so below the image of yourself there's save so tap save and that's recording and so it's making my video and it'll go around after it saves you just hit the x at the top and that stops goes up the way there'll be this yellow line that goes wait i saved it okay i can abandon it now all right so it's gone all right, it saves it to your camera roll. Okay. So if you want to get this to Canvas, what you do is, if you're using Canvas on your phone, you can just go over here into something. <laughs> and, uh, let me pick, pick a page. I want to make a new page. And add content. Okay, so in the add content, I'm going to scroll over to the camera. Well, not the camera, sorry, not the camera. The camera is if you want to just do it straight into Canvas, but I'm going to go over to the image icon, which is the very last one on the right. There's my video. And I choose. And in a second, it'll be on my Canvas page. done oh come on okay why can't i change my thing i can't change my title let's try that 
No, it can't be black, blank. All right, let me make another one. <laughs> And then I will go back to add content, scroll over to the picture, get the video, and hit choose. And this time when I hit done, somewhere here. Well, there'll be this yellow. Okay, there it is in Canvas. And that's recording. So it okay. So that's pretty simple. I did it in under five minutes <laughs> from recording to um, getting into Canvas. And then right. how would you caption that video in Canvas? Uh, I wouldn't. So I don't use videos direct to Canvas. I just did this so somebody could see how to do it. I would take the Snapchat to YouTube, caption it there, and then take the YouTube and embed it into Canvas. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to share, I, I just want to announce this. I'm going to share, a, a, there's a lot of people out there that I think that workflow is, is rather new to them. So uh -huh. uh, we at one has a guide called, it's a guide to creating micro lectures. I know you're not talking about micro lectures. It's a little, it's a little bit different in structure, in structurally, but the guide is super helpful. And it's just, it's some Google slides. And I want folks to have that resource because it'll walk you through those different steps and give you some tutorials and explain what hosting is and captioning and embedding and that sort of stuff. So just side note, thanks for, okay. thanks for letting me say that. Sure. All right. And let's see. Okay. So I still got plenty of time. So I'm also going to go back to the phone and show you all how to do the same thing with the emoji style one. Okay, so give me a second to clear out snap to get out of canvas and get back here. Mm -hmm. Where'd my phone go? There we go, okay. All right. So, all right. So for that one, I'm going to use Clips. Clips is an iOS only. So those of you on Android, um, <clears throat> there there are other options. I don't have an Android to practice with, so I haven't tested them all out. But if you do want to do something like this on Android, I can definitely connect with you after the session and support you through finding something that will work somewhat similarly. Okay. So for Clips, um you just start it and you're there like that and there's a star over here on the <laughs> lower right hand side and you can pick your head so you can be any of the existing things like the cow or the giraffe or the shark or the owl um and that's kind of fun too if you want to be a version of you like i did with this one this is an emoji and you can make these in your um, text message app on iOS. So I will quickly go to that and then come back to here and actually record. So you just go over to text and you just want to start up a new message. And then you have these little app thingies across the top of the keyboard. So this is the one, you, it's not that one. The one okay. That's the one you want. Okay. So this one, is the one that lets you make your head. So you hit the plus and you get to make a head. <laughs> so I'm gonna make like an alien <laughs> with purple skin and green hair. And we'll make some really crazy curly hair here. Do that one. Um, and you can go on and you know, do your brows and your eyes and your nose and your mouth and whatever. I do eyes. I want to do red eyes because I'm an alien. There we go. And, and after you've done that, you just hit done. And then you go back to clips and you're there. Um, so again, it's super fast. And then when I mean, you want to create something in clips, after you've picked your look, you just hit the record button. Oops, sorry, that's the picture button. You hit the uh, record button and you know you start talking your same thing um, clips will go beyond a minute 
But like I said, keep everything to a minute or less because it's just nice and easy to get started that way. Also with something short, you're less likely to want to edit. So it's not like, oh, I talked great for 15 seconds and I made a mistake. I want to cut that out and patch it together. It's like, no, just go back and start over. Uh, it's It'll save you more time to actually start over and try and get through your minute smoothly than it will be to piece it together out of like several 15 minute pieces. Okay. So when that's done, um, you can hit the share button at the bottom and save the video. Okay, it's again going to go to your camera roll and then the same process for bringing it into Canvas. If you wanted to go to YouTube first to do the captioning, I can do that as well. I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, so we'll go to YouTube. Perfect. And I'm going to hit the plus. And I'm going to, so you can just create a short right here. YouTube will also record for you. Um, I didn't show that version because uh, I a lot of people don't want to bother with YouTube. They just want to go straight into whatever LMS they're using. But if you wanted to create a short and just have it there, you can actually record yourself in YouTube. So I want to upload a video and I'm going to go find it. This one, actually, I'm going to do the shorter one. Sorry, that one is shorter. Oh, there'll be this yellow line to go. There'll be this so, yellow line. And then upload. Okay, and so it takes it however long it takes it. And then you'll get to see it here in YouTube. Oh, there'll be this yellow line that goes around and that's recording. Okay, so um, I haven't done captions. You can do captions right here. I haven't done them on the phone because I prefer to type on a larger keyboard, but you can do them right here. Um, oh, that's like actually the, new. You, you could do that No, that's to see recently. them. Sorry, sorry, okay. my bad. That's just to see them, not record them. So yeah, you will have to go back to YouTube. So if we, what time is it? All right, I can do this in a two minutes. So I'm gonna screen share and go to YouTube. <laughs> And show on you your computer to... now, right? Yeah, on my computer. Yeah. Um, I got to find out what browser YouTube's in. Um, oh, give me a Thank second. Thank you, Carolyn. This is a lot that you're navigating right now. I just put it in all this. I wasn't expecting to do all this. It's awesome, okay. though. All right. Let me get this set up first. And. Hmm. Oh, shoot. All right. Um, I uploaded that to a different YouTube account. So I'm just going to share and upload. All right. I'm going to migrate this to my computer quickly and go upload there and do everything that way. Select. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. I need to share this one. Okay. So, all right. New videos. Oh, no, it is there. What's the right account? Okay, cool. It's already there. So this is the video we just put the one at the very top of the list. And if you want to add captions to it, you need to go into the editor. Subtitles, here we go. So we're gonna pick subtitles on the left-hand menu, it's about halfway down my screen, it's in red now. And then pick this one that I just did. And you can, Upload them if you're the kind of person that types them separately into a file, or you can type them right here if you tap edit. All right, I went a little fast. Let me get back to this where I was. Okay, so on this page here, on the very far right, it has duplicate and edit. 
So if I don't have captions already, I can just edit. And actually, um, YouTube will kind of start you off. So it, it does a pretty good job these days. The AI has gotten much better. Um, so this is the uh, voice to text that it created automatically. So all I really need to do is fix it up, right? So I don't, I say I don't want you know the word O. I just delete it, put a capital T on there, and then say, oh, so this is what I said. There'll be this yellow line that goes around, and that's recording. So it's making my video, and you know maybe I want to say, fine, that's the end of a sentence, and then I can go and you know, clean this up start the next sentence, and so on. Um, when you're all done, you can play it and make sure it looks good. See, mostly we want to check is the timing. So you want to make sure the words are showing up on the screen at the time you're saying them or close to it. Then you just hit publish, and now it's captioned. Oh. And it, it is officially captioned as opposed to automatically captioned, because you can see both of them here in the subtitle window. If you go back to viewing it on YouTube or after you embedded it into your LMS, um, when you, where, where are my captions going? Uh, okay, let me, let me see if I can see them on the, okay, they're at the top. They're already there. So the captions are running across the top in a vertical video. And just a little different, they run across the bottom in horizontal video. And since it's already captioned, if I go to the Canvas page in which I embedded this, which I'm going to have to switch the screen share around, so bear with me. I can screen share to the other browser. <laughs> and where did I put this thing? It's in. No, it's in the other class. It's in this class. And it's called test. Boom. God, I was not expecting to do all this. All right. But here we go. Okay. And oh, be turn on my captions. Goes around, and that's recording. So it's making my. Oh, video. wait. It's at the top of my screen. Hold on. My screen is too small. Too a minute and then it stops so you can stop whenever okay let me try that again uh, i think i can't do it because my you can't see all the parts of the screen at once let me well, there'll back. be this yellow line that goes around and that's recording so it's oh wait 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 sorry my bad this isn't youtube this is the thing i uploaded directly into canvas sorry about that so no worries we can quickly switch over. <laughs> I'm, glad you're, I'm glad you're tracking that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like so many things going on. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to get my embed code. So what you can't see for a second. So let me just do this and share my embed code out of here. Hold on. So to find the embed code in YouTube, folks, you click on the share button and then you just tap on embed. Yeah, my share button's only giving me social media right now and email. Ugh. Uh, I got to get back out of here into the other view. Drawing three. Videos, shorts. Hold on. Sorry, taking me a little longer than I wanted, but should get there soon. Well, no, it's really hard to embed shorts. Oh, well. I'll just get this link, come back over here, and... Uh, no. Let me do that one. Okay. We'll just do it this way. Nope, that's not going to work. All right. I uh, 
need to go find another short and I'll drop it into there. So let me see, I still got one minute and then we still have some time for Q&A. <laughs> so let me go destroy something over here. See if I can get it done. Good work. Nope. Oh, well, sorry about that. Um, that way. Nope. Firefox is not happening. One more. I should know exactly what to do, but I'm sorry. Get rid of that. This. No. All right. Sorry. Not going to happen. Anyway, <laughs> if you have embedded it correctly, then yes, the YouTube um, subtitles will show up automatically inside your LMS. And I will go open the Q&A and see what's new. Yeah, we do have some questions here. Um, How am I displaying my phone Snapchat on Zoom? I am screen sharing my phone. Um, so if you go into Zoom, go to screen share. The same way you pick another window to share off your desktop, you just pick the phone. Um, you can do it through Wi-Fi or on a cable. I have it cabled, but Wi-Fi works if you have good, strong Wi-Fi. Have your students experienced any internet bandwidth issues with video downloads? None at all. Video downloads work great. Everybody's watching video all the time on their phones. Have I used Zoom to record my videos? No, I have not. I don't use Zoom much at all. Um, I, I don't know. I prefer to just use my phone. So I use my phone both ways. I use my phone in the ways I showed here. I also use my phone for the traditional horizontal videos that I have on YouTube. I just turn the phone the other way, shoot from there. It's great, has an awesome camera. It's not, it's three years old. It's nothing new, it's nothing fancy. Um, is there a way to have videos appear in Canvas announcement? Yes, you can have your videos appear anywhere you want in Canvas. Um, you just have to get the, um, in an announcement, I believe you can just hit the, the image button and embed it that way. If you're on the phone and you make an announcement, there's probably a, a camera button as well. So question about to that to clarify. The, the question is also asking so that the video can be seen in the notification in their email inbox. Anything that, that, okay, anything that Canvas sends in the notification will show up in the inbox. So I'm pretty sure Canvas is sending the entire message, which has the embedded video in it. I'm not 100% sure that's accurate, but maybe someone else. Okay, I don't but use, I use YouTube and, and So if you embed YouTube, it won't show the embedded YouTube. So the other with embed through Canvas, um, I... It will. No, because I do it with direct messages and I assume announcements are going to work the same way. If I send a, a message with an embedded YouTube, not an attachment, it should play. If it's an attachment, I'm not re I don't remember. Yeah, we're getting conflicting information about that. So we'll, we might have to test that out a little bit more. <laughs> okay. All right. So embedded videos do not show up in emailed Canvas announcements. It, I have to test it out. It might depend on how you embed it, right? If you're using, um, yeah, I don't know. If you're using yeah. the full embed code, the full embed code should just go to the email and it should show up in the email. So it might be the limitation of the email reader too. Yeah, I think you're, I think that's exactly right. And a workaround that I've come up with is I'll embed my video and then I'll include a little line just above the video that says, if you're viewing this um, on a phone or in email, tap here to watch the video. And then just link out to it as well. Okay, you can click on the link to open Canvas and then open the announcement. Well, yeah, you can definitely do that. So you can click on the link inside the email and then it'll take you back into Canvas to see it um, as well. 
And then Trisha wants to know if there's an easy way to do text overlays on YouTube videos. Um, yes, there's many easy ways to do this. Uh, I didn't do that today because that just gets into more stuff that's happening in the apps than, you know, and I think it, I want to just encourage everybody to start simple and you know, like I had my little flashcards, you can just hold up your words, um, like, you know, this kind of thing. Um, but you can do it, um, in, right inside of Snapchat. You can also do it inside of Clips, which I showed. And then you can also do it in other um, social media apps. One that I use a lot when I want to overlay something is called Storylux, um, but that's not the only one. Well, Snapseed will do it for you as well. Um, Adobe Express does it really nicely. And I didn't show express although it's quite popular because you can't record in express so i only want to show things where you can actually record your content um express is something you would go to after you've recorded it and you want to like add stuff to it and then koi says i did not upload my video onto youtube can you talk about oh if you don't want to upload okay so the very first one i did i didn't use youtube at all i just sent it straight to canvas so any lms will upload videos directly and if you don't want to use YouTube, you can just upload directly into your LMS, or you can use a kind of add-on like Studio, which is a sec uh, addition to Canvas, and other LMSs have similar additions. And oh. Studio will let you do all your post-processing, so to speak, um, to get your video ready and then place it in. Um, Trisha wants to know, Story Lux. So Story, L-U-X-E, I think. Let's uh, see, story, yeah, story lux, it's all one word, S story, S-T-O-R-Y-L-U-X-E. Uh, what kind of course is this? Tony, can you elaborate? Like, what do you mean, what kind of course, the courses that I showed the examples in? Oh, so Lumila is saying the inbox in Canvas doesn't show stuff. Yeah, that's true. The inbox in Canvas is very limited. Um, yeah, so I would not, um, I do send videos to students from inbox, but I send them as links. And then it's just a link. It's not, there's no way to embed into the message there. Carolyn, is your general approach to share your videos on YouTube as public or unlisted, or does it matter? Basically? It matters. <laughs> <laughs> so it matters. Um, so um, I have my instructional videos on YouTube are public. My social like, hey, go check out this and oh, this assignment's coming up. They're unlisted because they're irrelevant to the general public. And I, I don't want anybody who's coming as a public person, like outside of my institution to see my instructional videos to get confused by all this other stuff I'm doing, um, where I'm you know, using videos to basically interact with students. Um, um, Tony, oh yeah, my classes are all online. If I was teaching on campus, I don't know if I would bother with all this, um, because mostly I'm doing this to kind of sub to replace the, the campus interaction. Um, I might, you know, if I taught on campus and it was one day a week and it was a hybrid kind of thing, I would probably do this to kind of get the rest of the, keep the energy going through the week, I guess is the best way to put it. Are there certificates for distance learning video making? I don't know. You have to check. I don't, I don't know either. Not that I'm aware of. If anybody check else, we have <laughs> lots of knowledge in the room. If anyone else knows of a certification um, for Christina, video my classes are asynchronous. Tony, is this a profitable or charitable enterprise? I don't know. It's a community college. Do I charge students? No, no. This is students pay tuition and they take classes. Teresa is inspired. Awesome. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to put my contact in the chat since we are almost done and I got to run to something else. Uh, if you want anything more, any kind of support, any questions, suggestions, things like that, uh, hit me up. Carolyn, um, the, 
Thank you for your generous sharing. That was a wild ride and it was fun. It was so wild. <laughs> it was fun. Um, I'm putting the link in the chat one more time where the, the archive will be shared. Um, so please go to that, that website and you'll find it next week. And you're getting lots of applause. Um, Thank you so much, everybody. Thank it was you. fun. I hope to see you all again soon. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend and make great videos. Share them. I'd love to see it. Yay. And I have to sign off because I've got to go to another thing in a minute. <laughs> okay. Bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. <laughs>